Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to name an action franchise with more memorable stunts than Mission Impossible. Over the last 22 years, it's become one of the most dependably entertaining properties in all of Hollywood, and a huge part of that is Tom Cruise's dedication to death-defying practical stunts. They're a breath of fresh air in today's CG-saturated market, and today I want to talk about how the series Spectacular Stunts sets it apart from its blockbuster brethren. I'm Andrew, and this is why Mission Impossible is the cure for the common green screen. From scaling the world's tallest skyscraper to dangling off the side of an A400 Airbus, every entry in the series has had a signature set piece that makes you stop and ask, as we did, how the hell is Tom Cruise still alive? And from Mission Impossible Fallout, they've upped the ante with five phenomenal feats. All performed by the star himself with a bare minimum of CGI. You guys remember Infinity War, right? Great movie, but I didn't exactly walk away thinking, man, Robert Downey Jr. really put it all on the line. I mean, he barely even put on a costume. Unless you count the sweatpants he wore for 90% of the film. Tony Stark is he's tired. There's no doubt RDJ and the entire MCU crew works hard for their money, but compared to what Tom Cruise went through for Fallout, they might as well be Skyping into the set. Cruz has a rep for suffering for his art and made headlines worldwide after he shattered his ankle jumping across a London rooftop for the film. But beyond bruises, Cruz also invests in a ton of specialized training. For one thing, he not only learned how to fly a helicopter, he performed a ludicrous inverted flip inside a narrow canyon that pilots with decades of experience wouldn't dream of flying into. It takes something like three months of eight hour days just to become a novice helicopter pilot. Tom needed to work around the clock to reach the level of skill the sequence needs. There are very few students that have his level of dedication and focus. And since he was all alone in that cockpit, he not only had to fly the damn thing, he also had to run the camera and, oh yeah, act. Most performers would stop there and call it a career, but Cruz also spent four weeks skydiving up to eight times a day to hone his skills for the high altitude, low open leap in the same movie. As the first actor to perform a halo jump. This is one for the history books, the world's first halo jump. Cruz leaped from a plane moving 160 miles per hour at 25,000 feet in the air, and he was just one cog in a much larger machine. The best clocks have dual movements, cogs that fit, that cooperate by design. The aerial photographer had to perform the same complex choreography only with a, get this, 20 pound IMAX camera strapped to his helmet. On top of that, halo jumpers wear military oxygen masks so that they don't suffocate at that insane altitude, but they didn't want to cover up Tom Cruise's million dollar mug after spending weeks throwing him out of a plane to prepare. We've been doing five jumps a day out of the Twin Otter. In the afternoons, we'll do three C-17 jumps, and it's challenging. So the studio had to build a special helmet from scratch that could showcase his famous face and keep him alive at the same time. That's a whole lot of effort, when they could have just as easily strapped Tom Cruise in a bright green room and blasted him with fans. But the result is a sequence that is extremely sophisticated behind the scenes and elegantly simple on screen. It almost makes you forget that they threw Tom Cruise out of a fucking plane. Practical stunts like this used to be a norm in action movies, but at a certain point, Hollywood either got scared or they got lazy. So let's talk about what we lose with CGI. Now, don't get me wrong, green screen has some very real benefits. For one thing, it's a lot less risky. Stunt performers put their lives on the line for a fraction of the fortune and none of the fame. He's good, right? Sometimes I let him do the wide shots when I feel like getting blaze back in my Winnie. But CG provides a safer, albeit sterile, alternative. Green screen also lets filmmakers capture the action in a controlled environment, where they can finesse the scene over multiple takes without having to reset expensive destruction. And yes, green screen allows movies to up the ante when it comes to spectacle. I mean, let's face it, the Hulk has come a very long way from Lou Ferrigno. And today's cosmic superhero movies just wouldn't be possible without an army of computers rendering the gods and monsters on screen. Also fractals, so go check out our GFX videos. But can you think of any segment in a Marvel or DC movie that made you wonder how the f did they do that? The action in Ragnarok and Black Panther is a gorgeous feast for the eyes, and we believe in it because we've become invested in these characters over the last 10 years. <laughs> Ha! 
I'm just a huge fan. But on their own, I haven't seen anything that compares to the truck flip scene from The Dark Knight. Or the Grand Theft Airplane from Rises. That's because it was real. Christopher Nolan brought a level of verisimilitude to his movies that made the action feel raw and authentic. Well, aside from bits and pieces of the fight choreography. And you betrayed us. But it gave his movies a sense of danger and realism that modern superhero films can't measure up to. And even they can't touch the intensity of Mission Impossible. When you see Tom Cruise dangling off a helicopter 2,000 feet in the sky, your brain knows he's in a safety harness, but your gut, your gut thinks it's real. And when he falls 40 feet and bounces off the cargo it's carrying, you can't help but gasp. gasp. We walk into movie theaters wanting to suspend our disbelief. And it's a whole lot easier without imaginary cameras, impossible physics, and unconvincing CGI. After years of gratuitous green screen, we're finally seeing a renewed appreciation for old school action. Dangerous stunts are as old as cinema itself. I mean, Buster Keaton was just inches away from being squashed by a two-ton building in 1928. And by the way, if that's your first time hearing about Buster Keaton, I highly suggest you look into him. He's a fantastic filmmaker that did amazing stunts all by himself, and they're some of the best stunts ever committed to film, all in the 20s. Movie magic evolved along with the medium, but until CGI, there really wasn't a convincing way to fake this kind of stuff. And as action movies solidified into a genre in the 70s and 80s, practical stunts became the star of the show, especially car chases. Ask anyone about the plot of the 1968 film Bullet, and you'd probably draw a blank, but its car chase through the streets of San Francisco is one of cinema's most impressive feats. It took three weeks to film a 10 minute scene, but it laid the groundwork for a generation of stunt spectacles. From the French Connection's equally elaborate chase through the streets that the production never actually shut down to James Bond's demolition derby through Paris and the unbelievable bus jump in speed. Okay, so the gap was added in digitally, big whoop, but they legit jumped a specially modified bus over 100 feet. Anyway, speaking of Paris, Cruise and Company engineered an extremely impressive motorcycle chase through the Arc de Triomphe for Fallout. The crew were only able to shut down the heavily populated tourist site for an hour and 15 minutes. And if you've never worked on a production, that's not a lot of time. And inside that time, they had to choreograph 70 stunt cars, get all the shots they needed, and not get their star killed. At one point, Cruz's safety rig wasn't even working correctly, but they couldn't spare a single second to fix it. So he just said, put the camera out there and made the sharp turn at top speed without a helmet on. Once again, they could have avoided all of that effort with some goofy green screen, especially with machines that are way less susceptible to the uncanny valley. But Mission Impossible is keeping the practical tradition alive, and it's not alone. The Fast and the Furious series, for example, involves a surprising amount of practical stunts. They're definitely not afraid to use CG, but they're also catapulting real cars, smashing them with wrecking balls, and yes, dropping them out of an airplane. Stunts have gotten more expensive and elaborate, but that's exactly what makes them so satisfying to watch. They're the new old school. Look, the digital revolution has changed everything from cinema to society itself, and there's just no walking that back. When CG first started making its way into action movies like the Matrix trilogy, it was simply used to supplement reality. But soon, filmmakers were using it to replace reality. The results have been mixed to say the least, and while there's still some truly dazzling CGI out there in recent years, there's been a renewed appreciation for things done the old fashioned way. We're so inundated with special effects that they've lost the special part of the equation. Now they're just effects. But the same way Polaroids and vinyl records and cassettes have made a comeback in the era of cloud storage, practical stunts have brought back value to a practice that had become cheap and disposable. They're tangible. They have a weight and a gravity to them that you couldn't fake with a million, billion, trillion polygons. 
We may never see a return to the glory days of squibs and squealing tires, but as long as Tom Cruise is still f***ing breathing, the Mission Impossible franchise will keep the death-defying dream of practical stunts alive. Thanks everyone so much for watching. What are some of your favorite stunts in movie history? The ones that really get the heart pumping and the adrenaline rushing? Do you have a favorite fight, a jump, a car chase, or is it just a sweet ass explosion? Leave a comment, let us know. Please subscribe to Now This Nerd because this video will self-destruct in 10 seconds.